What's up everybody? All right, so today we're gonna to talk a little bit about day trading terminology and the term we're gonna talk about is float. I get a lot of people asking me questions about float. What is float? Why is it important? How does it affect the stocks that you're gonna trade? So this is gonna require understanding um, a few other terms that are gonna help you um, really get a sense of what float means. So we're gonna go through a few terms and I'm gonna show you some examples of low float stocks versus uh, thickly traded stocks or heavy float stocks. All right, so when we talk about day trading terminology, uh, float is something that is gonna come up a lot. Now, when a company does its initial public offering, that's the IPO, what they're doing is they're selling shares onto the open market and those can be bought uh, by anyone interested in you know, taking a piece of the company. When a company does its IPO, they're releasing a fixed number of shares onto the market and that becomes the float. The number of shares available to trade is the float. So let's just say, for example, a company uh, does a 10 million share IPO and those shares are priced at $10 a share. They're going to raise $100 million from that IPO. Now that money can go towards uh, investing into the company, infrastructure, building factories, strategic investments, etc. And obviously as an obligation of now being a publicly traded company, they have to uh, show their shareholders what they've done and the profits they've made on a quarterly and annual basis. So um, the important thing to understand there is that every single day we're all trading when we trade a stock out of the same pool of shares. That 10 million share float, that is the amount of shares available to trade. Now, typically, it's, it's not going to change on a day-to-day -day basis. So when you're buying shares, you know, you're buying them from a seller. When you're selling shares, you're selling them to a buyer. So we're just exchanging shares within this same pool. That pool is the float. So what supply and demand will tell us is that stocks that have a low float... Well, they've got less supply. They have a smaller amount of shares available to trade. So in an instance where there is very, very heavy demand, we get the imbalance between supply and demand, and that's when we can get parabolic moves. So as traders, one of the things that we look for are stocks that can be volatile. So let's look just at DRYS. This is a recent example. This is a stock that literally, this is not exaggerating, when uh, from $4 a share to over $100 a share in four trading sessions, right? That's pretty crazy. Well, that's a relatively low float stock. So I can type in DRYS here, and I can see that the float is 21 million shares. Okay, so the float is fairly small. Now, that's relative. So let's look at another company. Let's look at Bank of America. Bank of America, you can see, uh, has been on a pretty big run here from 17 up to 22. Uh, but generally speaking, this is not a stock that makes really big moves. The float is 10 billion shares. All right. So for this, you know, this is like a 20% move, which is pretty massive considering the, you know, the type of volatility this stock usually sees. It's, you know, pretty much trades in range. So the value here for an investor is that this type of stock is usually going to be safer. You're less likely to see huge moves either to the upside or the downside. So it's a little bit more predictable. Let's look at another stock. Um, we'll look at Sprint. This is another stock that trades in a fairly narrow range on any given day. And especially in terms of day trading, this is what the intraday chart looks like. You know, not a lot of range. Let's look at Siri. This is another one that shows very little range. We're trading in a 10 cent range here. Now, when we look at the level two, this is the other thing we'll notice. A stock that has a very heavy float, very large float, is going to be thickly traded. It's going to be more crowded. You have hundreds of thousands of shares of buyers on the bid and sellers on the ask. All right Now, if I was thinking about day trading this stock, I would look at it and I'd be like, well, doesn't it look like it's going to move very much because there's so many sellers that need to move out of the way before it's going to move up even a penny. And guess what? At the next penny, we're going to see the same number of sellers sitting at 54 or 55, 56, 57. So it's a stock that's not very volatile. Again, as an investor, a long-term investor, that's good. That's what you want, right? You want safe, relatively predictable. But as a day trader, we want volatility. So that means we're going to focus on stocks with lower floats. 
And as a threshold, I focus on stocks with a float of under 100 million shares. All right, so you can see all of these stocks here. Uh, we're listing the float in this column. This is the float column. So this is an 11 million share float. This was 41 million, 44 million. This one's very low, only 940,000 share float. Uh, the yellow ones are marked because they are definitely going to be the stocks that have the potential to make big moves. Let's look at uh, GLBS. This has a float, well, it's not listed here. This float is under a million shares. And this is a stock that, um, as you can see here, GLBS, um, let's see, where, where are we looking? Let me go forward, there we go. GLBS, this went from $3.35 up to $23.60. Okay, that's a huge move. All, all this uh, really was, was a huge imbalance between buyers and sellers, between supply and demand. This is a day where we really didn't have very many sellers and the stock just squeezed up. Limited supply with heavy demand can create an explosive situation. So the important thing first and foremost is to look for stocks that have lower floats. And then the next thing is to look for the catalyst that will drive demand. So the way I do it is every single day I open up my uh, watch list here, my, I open up my scanners and I start looking at the stocks that are gapping up. So if I move this out of the way, these are the stocks that are gapping up. Now, they're gapping up for a reason. A stock doesn't uh, look like it's going to open 40 or 50% higher than it closed the day before without some type of catalyst. So I look through this list of the top 10 biggest gappers and then I simply go on Market Watch, Stock Twits, or I ask in our chat room, does anyone see any news on this stock? What's the catalyst? What's going to drive this higher? And if I see that there's good news like earnings or there's, you know, whatever it might be, uh, they, maybe they got a new contract for a big order or something like that, that's going to tell me this is a stock that has potential and lots of traders are going to want to get a piece of the action. Now, over the years, what I've done is I've been able to put together a watch list of former runners, which is right here. These are stocks that in the past have made big moves just like GLBS, all right? Guess what, history repeats itself. So these stocks that have made big moves in the past, they often you know, see these big moves again because they have the right criteria. They have the low float, and so really all they need is the catalyst. So anytime we have news on these types of stocks, we can have explosive uh, breakouts. You can see here Lake, L-A-K-E, this is a company that makes biohazard suits. It's a low float stock and it's squeezed here from about $78 up to $28 per share. Now the float right now is, let's see, Lake, and I'm looking in trade ideas, 6.78 million shares. So it's a very low float. What's another one? DGLY, Digital Ally. These guys make um, body cameras that uh, police officers wear. So during the um, some of the shootings and violence and stuff that we've had over the years, if this comes into play as you know people start to speculate maybe congress will make it a law that all police officers need to wear body cameras well that's certainly good for the maker of the body cameras and this stock squeezed from eight dollars to 32 dollars now i can show you tons of examples of stocks like these and what i've done is i've gone through all of them and, and really narrowed down the common denominators what do these all have in common and how can i find these before they make the big move I know they all share low floats. And so I start every morning by looking at the stocks that have low floats and seeing if they have a strong catalyst. Now, there are a few ways a float can change. All right, so I wanna talk about this here um, just so you understand these, these three scenarios. The first way a float can change is if a company performs a share buyback. All right, now you guys have probably heard about this before. You know, Apple doing a massive you know, multi-billion dollar share buyback program. All right, this is when the company buys back some of the shares that they sold during their IPO. What that does is it reduces the float and it increases the value of the company. So it's almost like, um, let's, let's just say for example, when the company did its IPO, it's like filling up a cup of coffee. And when you do a buyback, you're decreasing the coffee in there, but you're increasing the value. It's like turning coffee into espresso. Right? It's stronger, it's good for shareholders, the value goes up. Everyone that's owning stock, uh, they're gonna see an increase in the value. All right, Value goes up, the float goes down. Now, what a company can also do 
when this is going to be adding water to the coffee is they can do a secondary offering. A secondary offering is after the initial public offering. And even if they do a third or fourth, it's still called a secondary offering. And what it is, is it's selling more shares onto the market. It's selling more shares to raise money. And companies only really do this when they need money. So this is not something that's really good news for a stock. And in fact, it's probably no surprise that DRYS did a secondary offering. Um, and I'll pull back the daily chart here. They did this to raise money. And the stock promptly went from, on this day here, $54 all the way down to $10 a share. That was a big drop. They did a secondary offering. They raised money. They're diluting the value of the stock. They're releasing more shares onto the market. The float is going to increase. So if a company does uh, secondary offerings and things like that, the float can go up. If they do a share buyback program, the float will go down. Now, because I often trade small caps, stocks under $10, these companies rarely do share buyback programs. They can rarely afford to. These are small caps. They're low, you know, low price stocks. They're not usually the most successful companies out there. You know, they're emerging. Some of them have the potential of moving their way from small cap to mid cap to large cap, but a lot of them will struggle in the small cap price range for a long time. So what we see more often in this price range are secondary offerings. All right, now, uh, the third way the float can change is with a stock split, all right? Now, we'll bring back Apple. Again, Apple recently, well, not super recently at this point, but uh, they did a seven to one stock split. So remember, the stock was trading at $700 a share. And I think the problem there was that it was priced really high for retail traders. You know, retail traders that wanted to buy it just simply couldn't afford to. It was just, you could buy a couple shares, but it just seemed like, what's the point? So what they did is they did a seven to one stock split. So everyone, uh, basically what this did is it, it changed the flow. So if you were holding a thousand shares at $700 after the stock split, you would now be holding 7,000 shares at $100. This is kind of like taking a $100 bill and turning it into 20s. You know, it's, it's not that you've really changed the value of what you have, you've just changed the price. All right, and you've had to change the quantity of bills you have you know, to equal the same price. Now, when you do a stock split, now every you know, thousand shares turned into 7,000 and the float goes up, all right? So that increases the float. Now, what some companies will do, and again, this is something we see a lot with the small caps, is they'll perform a reverse stock split. So it, it's, a, it's required that stocks uh, on NYSE and NASDAQ um, exchanges that they trade over a dollar. Now, stocks that are trading below a dollar can risk getting delisted, and then they're going to move on to the OTC exchange. You know, and and that's not something that's that's not a good move for a company. You, they want to stay listed if they are already listed. So what they sometimes will do is a reverse stock split. So that means if the current trading price is let's say ninety cents or a dollar, it's just hovering just above that minimum uh, price they could say, well, let's do a 10 to one reverse split. We're gonna change the price from a dollar to $10 a share, all right? And then we'll be in good standing. So if you were previously holding 1,000 shares at a dollar, now you'd only be holding 100 shares at $10. Again, it's just like changing in the 20s for the 100. I mean, the, the value hasn't really changed in that sense, but um, what does change is the float because now you're making the float smaller. What used to be a thousand shares is now only a hundred shares. And when that happens across the entire float, your, your float is changing 10 to one, right? In this case, that has the effect of, um, you know, making some of these stocks more volatile. When you reduce the float, you reduce the supply, the number of shares available to trade. And GBSN is a classic example of this. This is a company that is now trading at one penny. They keep doing reverse splits so they can stay listed on the exchange. And when we start to pull the chart back, you can see they've done so many reverse splits. When you go back to you know where this was priced at, let's say even just about a year ago, it'd be nearly a million dollars a share because they keep doing these reverse splits. The stock keeps selling off. I mean, you can see this, it's almost hard to even read this chart because of how much it just continues to drop. So this is obviously, you know, not, it's not a very strong company, right? If it was a strong company, they wouldn't have to keep doing 
these reverse stock splits. So this is the type of thing that we see with small caps. You know, these stocks that they, you know, they do secondary offerings, they do reverse stock splits. And sometimes these are just a few steps away uh, from bankruptcy, which is, you know, obviously the end of the road for these for these stocks or getting delisted, which is uh, certainly close to the end of the road. So the important thing to know is that float is a very important criteria when you're looking at stocks. It'll help you understand the potential volatility. As day traders, we like volatility. So we're gonna look naturally for stocks that have a lower float. But as a long-term investor, you're typically going to be you know, a little bit more cautious with volatility and looking for more stability, right? So it really depends on the type of trader you are um, you know, and, and what your, your outlook is, whether you're looking for 10 minute, 20 minute hold times or like, you know, 10 week, you know, 20 week type of long term holds. All right. So the way I do, um, you know, my, my day every single morning starts by going over the scanners, looking at the top 10 gappers and then checking the float. Why is the stock gapping up? I can check float right here in trade ideas. I can also just log into the chat room and ask anyone in our room. All right, so today we've talked about the definition of float, which also required talking a little bit about uh, the definition of an IPO, a share buyback program, a secondary offering, and a stock split. All right, guys, so if you have any questions, please feel free to email me, ross at warriortrading.com, or feel free to put your comments in the video below. All right, thanks, guys. Hey guys, I also want to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can click by subscribing. That way you can get alerts when I upload new videos, like my teaching you how to day trade video or the video where I turned $1,000 into $8,600 in one month. Thanks guys.